Hi there, I'm Eric Claussen, a managing partner at CG Life. I'm here at uh, Biotech Showcase in San Francisco, where every year the worlds of biotech and, uh, and investment come together and really set the tone for what the life sciences industry is going to be doing in the year ahead. It's an exciting year, obviously, going into a new decade. We're joined by Dr. Grace Cologne, uh, CEO of Encarta Therapeutics. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, we appreciate your time. We'd love to, to learn a little bit more about Encarta Therapeutics. Can you just tell us a little bit about the company and what you're focused on? Absolutely. We're focused on treating cardiovascular co uh, conditions using the inhalation route. And the advantage of the inhalation route is by delivering directly to the through the lungs to the heart, mm -hmm. you can administer treatments more rapidly mm -hmm. and usually in a lower dose. So the, that's the uh, in rhythm it's a combination device and therapeutic. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the, the reason for the combination and the unmet need you're trying to, to solve for? Absolutely. So the unmet need we're trying to solve for is to treat acute episodes of atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. Atrial fibrillation affects over 6 million people in the U.S. alone and over 30 million people worldwide. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, there is no option. So if I have an episode here in the U.S., there is no option for me to have my heart return back to normal sinus rhythm away from the atrial fibrillation in minutes or to be able to do that myself. So that is a significant unmet need because atrial fibrillation is a significant cause of stroke. Mm -hmm. And the longer you're experiencing an episode of atrial fibrillation, it could be minutes, days, sometimes weeks, mm -hmm. uh, the higher the risk of uh, having a stroke the higher the likelihood the disease will progress into a more serious and persistent phase, mm -hmm. the higher the likelihood you may need an interventional procedure called an ablation, mm -hmm. which is only curative about half the time and sometimes mm -hmm. requires repeats procedures. Mm -hmm. So there would be significant advantages if every time you had an episode, you could have your heart return to normal rhythm in minutes. That's transformative in this treatment area. And there's currently, there's no other therapy out there now. It's the, the therapy is is trying to get to medical assistance as quickly as possible? That's right. So right now, the options for an AFib patient, certainly in the US, the treatment paradigm is a little bit different in other countries. They do use a bit more pharmacological conversion, IV versions of some of the antiarrhythmic drugs that are currently prescribed everywhere oral for chronic prevention. Mm -hmm. We don't have those available in the US. Mm -hmm. So in Europe, there is an option to go into the ER and have IV therapy there are disadvantages to that as well. Mm -hmm. We don't have that option in the US. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we are hoping to develop this you know, combination treatment of an inhaled existing drug called uh, flecainide mm -hmm. in combination with an existing device, a nebulizer off the shelf, manufactured all over the world and approved. And then the combination of these two will allow uh, patients to take the therapy, whether it be in the hospital or at a doctor's office mm -hmm. or eventually, ultimately at home mm -hmm. or traveling or anywhere they happen to be. Wherever you might be. That's right. Uh, everybody comes to Biotech Showcase and, and this, this week with something in mind that they want to accomplish. What are you looking to accomplish this week in San Francisco? Something very specific. We are embarking on raising our Series C. We did Exciting. a Series B, a 40 million Series B a couple of years ago and we are raising funding to complete the first pivotal trial for the first indication, which is medically supervised atrial fibrillation. So we're meeting with investors. We're also always meeting with um, biotech and pharma partners mm -hmm. to keep everybody informed about what we're doing and looking for partnerships. That's great. As you look, uh, as you look at the agenda for Biotech Showcase, you're joining a panel tomorrow. Uh, it looks like an exciting panel, looking at um, some of the, the, you know, the evolution of, of uh, venture finance uh, within this industry. What are some of the topics or themes you look forward to discussing in that panel? I think the availability of seed capital is one of the biggest problems in the industry. It really has not gone away. What has changed is that there are more avenues than ever to obtain seed financing early and sort of that valley of death before you have early proof of concept where more traditional institutional investors would want to join. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to be discussing different avenues for seed financing. We're also going to be discussing how to do more with less. What are some of the creative ways early stage entrepreneurs can advance their company without requiring a ton of financing? Mm -hmm. So I think those are both sides of the equations. How do you access more capital, but then also how do you do more with less? Mm -hmm. Well, you, uh, it's probably a topic very close to your heart. It's uh, pun intended. It's mm -hmm. a uh, um, 
you, know, you came from venture capital uh, early in your career, you've been in a number of commercial roles, but are there lessons or learnings that you have carried with you from your time in venture capital that help you now as you're fundraising for Encarta Therapeutics? Absolutely. We are looking for uh, like-minded investors who share our passion for this. And having been in venture capital myself, I was a partner at a firm in New York for several years and led some investments. I think I have a pretty good understanding of the investor mindset mm -hmm. and also understand the differences in investing philosophies and management philosophies that allow me, I think, to hopefully better communicate not only with potential investors, but once they've invested, really be mindful of their priorities and sometimes different, slightly different priorities or concerns and be able to have that active conversation and get them on the same page to where the company needs to go. Mm -hmm. And I think that has served me well. Mm -hmm. To be able to see it from both sides. Exactly. Find balance. Exactly. Uh, obviously, at, at Biotech Showcase, this week, every year, certain themes emerge as the week goes on in conversation in the sessions. Have any themes emerged for you that, uh, that, that you're going to carry with you after this week? Absolutely. One of the key themes is what's happening in the public markets and what that might look like this year. Mm -hmm. That is um, relevant to us because obviously even though we are looking for private financing, there's always the question of at some point, does it make sense to access the public markets? Mm -hmm. And so really hearing the dynamics of how that has changed from last year has been very interesting. Had a lot of conversations about that. Another big topic of interest is pricing and the pricing pressure and the reputation of the industry. We're mm -hmm. having a lot of discussions about that and what are some creative solutions and ways we can come together to really um, you know, make sure we are, as an industry, mm -hmm. doing the right thing for patients, but mm -hmm. at the same time doing the right thing for patients long term. Mm -hmm. How do we survive as an industry and how do we work with all the other stakeholders in the healthcare system to make sure that the value we feel we bring to patients mm -hmm. is appropriately um, paid for by the system because mm -hmm. we're saving costs, we're saving lives, we're creating better quality of life, we're doing a number of very important things. And uh, the pricing question is quite complex. So I think there's a lot more discussion around that. Mm -hmm. I sense a note of optimism in, in what you're saying. So we'll leave it there on an optimistic note going into 2020. Thank you uh, very much. Grace, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. If you enjoyed the interview that you just saw, please click subscribe to the Biotech Showcase channel so you get notified when future interviews like this one come up. And thanks for enjoying our content.